Good morning, or good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. I notice some of you are already uh, into the conversation. I like that. And it looks like Miranda, Miranda Griffin. Miranda Griffin was first, and uh, welcome, Miranda. And if you don't have some channel stickers, send me your uh, mailing address to ben.o.cichlid at gmail. I'll send you some stickers for being first this morning, first among the early birds. So um, today we're going to talk about what it feels like to be um, a fish keeper without fish, uh, sort of like a dog without a bone. And uh, I did invite one fish to join me today. I'd like you all to meet Gil. This is Gil, and uh, he has been a... Uh, very loyal, low-maintenance fish for many years. <laughs> I figured we couldn't have a live stream without a fish, so I invited Gil. <laughs> for those of you that have seen some of my videos that are filmed outdoors, you've noticed Gil over my shoulder sometimes. He's in the background when I'm uh, doing videos on tearing apart canister filters or doing maintenance and things like that. Where I film outside, you can see Gil in the background. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get underway. We're going to talk about what life is like uh, without fish and tanks, what the future is looking like. And I'm also going to get into um, a survey that I conducted at the YouTube channel. And um, the number one topic was water clarity and parameters, you know, the, uh, what makes good water quality. I'm going to get into that too. So uh, definitely uh, stay tuned, tell all your friends we're, we're getting going here, and let's officially start this uh, live stream. If you're new to the channel, be sure to uh, hit that sub, hit that bell, and it looks like, uh, it looks like I had the numbers backwards, it looks like about... 30% of the people who watch the videos are subscribed and uh, the others, 69.4 uh, to be precise, are not subscribed. So we have a lot of, a lot of room for subscribers and so be sure to, uh, to hit that bell. And uh, you can see here we're, we're flirting with 30,000. We're flirting with 30,000. So uh, that's exciting. Uh, certainly years ago when I first started, uh, the idea of 1,000 subs was overwhelming to me. And uh, on days when I'd get 100 views, I felt like I was on top of the world. Uh, the thought of, uh, of 30,000 is, is pretty, uh, uh, pretty mind-boggling, but um, let, let's go for it. Let's go for 30,000, and uh, while I'm driving across the country to Nashville, let's get people to hit that sub button. And uh, for those of you who'd like to support the efforts of the channel and you like the content of the channel, uh, you can visit the Amazon store where I have a lot of reviewed products. And uh, anything you acquire, because I'm an affiliate, um, anything that you acquire while at Amazon after using that link uh, actually gives some credit to the channel. So it's a very good program. It doesn't raise your cost one, one cent. Also, um, if you visit Teespring, it's under every one of my videos. Uh, you can pick up um, you know, things like coffee mugs that have uh, pictures of different, different things, like some of my favorite fish on them. And uh, hoodies, I've got a hoodie that has the Nashville uh, map on it just to sort of commemorate what's going on. And uh, that also helps a lot. So uh, that's the commercial. Let's get right into some of the topics. The uh, Last week I had a couple videos that came out and um, the last water change was just sort of my video uh, saying goodbye to the 60 gallon. The, uh, the, the tank I used to always sit in front of and go, this is Ben Ochart with the 60-gallon cichlid tank. It was a very special tank. I really love that tank. And uh, it went to a very good home. Kevin Green, who is one of our uh, moderators here, uh, Kevin came over uh, with his daughter Lily, and they, they uh, spent some time here at the house and took the tank and have given it a very, very good home. And the fish, including uh, one of my favorite all-time fish, Photoshop, the red cap lethronops are doing great. And uh, every now and then he'll post it and I'll be, you know, post a, a video and I get to take a peek. And uh, the 150 is also doing great and uh, at, at Tony's house and, uh, and also the, uh, 
you know, the 100, we'll get more into that in a minute, was just picked up. And uh, I also released a video on Vinny. And interestingly enough, uh, right after I uploaded the video, as sometimes happens, sometimes uh, real life, real life and the videos that are uploaded don't don't sync up. Like um, I've had some folks comment under some recent videos. Wait a minute. Did you sell your tanks or didn't you? Or, uh, you know, I, I, I thought you were leaving for Nashville. Yeah. Uh, realize that there's a lot of content that is uh, already filmed and uh, and includes the tanks that I've sold and is going to get posted uh, and it's going to be uploaded. So don't don't get confused. The tanks and the fish are sold and I am uh, going to be leaving in on the 30th. Uh, for Nashville, where I'm going to be buying new tanks and setting up a whole brand new adventure. Uh, it's just like sometimes when I when I when I post a video, and it posts at midnight, someone will post under it. My God, you don't get any sleep, and um, realize that YouTube allows you to set the time that you would like the video to post. So I'm not necessarily awake at midnight uh, posting the video. <laughs> so. Uh, Anyway, just to clarify that, the um, but you're going to be seeing probably another four or five more videos with old tanks, and you'll probably see uh, content from the old tanks uh, going on into the future as I draw on some of that footage to to help drive home points or ideas that I might have in a brand new video. So, so those uh, those tanks will and and that content will probably always be a part of my channel, even though those tanks are gone. So. At any rate, don't don't uh, don't be confused. <laughs> the timeline often reality and the YouTube timeline sometimes doesn't uh, doesn't match up. Um, interestingly enough, I mean these 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 last two videos they, they did okay. I mean the last water change is probably going to be over five thousand vi uh, vids or five thousand views. Uh, the uh, the video about Vinny will probably end up at around 2,500 within the next week or so. But what surprised me is is how well some of the live stream videos have been doing. I don't know if it's the thumbnail, um, the content, people just interested in, in the updates. But uh, th this is very unusual for the live stream videos to be actually outpacing uh, or actually outperforming the um, the videos that uh, I normally upload. As you can see here, the last two live streams were you know almost seven thousand and seventy two hundred. So uh, those, those live stream and that's you, that's you, you, you guys and gals, and you know talking it up, sharing it, uh, you know sharing the links, that kind of thing. That's really uh, really what you folks are doing, and it's very very appreciated, very very appreciated what you folks do to help support the channel and promote the channel. So um, I also have a video coming out and I finally have the thumbnail for it. What do you think about this thumbnail? Is it a little bit too drastic? Fish poison? Is that alarming? <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I have had my, uh, my world rocked a bit in the area of uh, fish food after having uh, that two hour in, uh, Zoom conference call with uh, Nuri Fisher, the owner and uh, the president and owner of Piscine Energetics in Canada, and uh, I tell you, our fish are our, our, our fish are wasting a lot of energy uh, pushing things through their body that that are not providing them with any nutrition, and so what you have is you have this negative nutrition that's going on and. Um, to me, I mean, it's just it's just destructive. It's adding more waste to the water, which means more maintenance, higher nitrates. It's uh, and there's stuff that's added in there, and the way that they convert it into a dry pellet is uh, is you know you're getting ash and you're getting anyway. Uh, it, it's a five part series. It starts October 28th, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be going on during my travels. Uh, during my travels to uh, to Nashville, these videos are going to be uploading in five parts. Each one is about, I think they're averaging uh, about half, maybe just right around a half hour each, and they're just jam packed, 
jam-packed with information. We start off with a background, uh, some background on Nuri, what, what, what took him into uh, the fish food world. And, uh, and then we get into the, uh, uh, the piscine process, like what, what is the mysis shrimp? Why is it so nutrition rich? Uh, what is the relationship that, that PE, piscine energetics, has with the Canadian government? Why, why does this give them access to sem- so many high-end scientists at universities and laboratories to evaluate the product? And um, anyway, it, it, it's just a really interesting discussion. And it left me, um, uh, it, it ended up with me sort of spitting out this, this, this thumbnail of fish poison. And uh, anyway, that it'll be a five-part series. So stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be uh, a, a lot of fun. Uh, my, my dashboard says we have about 88 people on. So uh, keep sharing. Let's get it up to, uh, let's get it up a little bit higher here and get as many people on as we can. The more, the merrier, right? And um, there's a, a lot of videos in the queue, even besides the Piscine video, there's there's a, a, a video on buying aquariums. Uh, having gone through the selling of some aquariums just recently, it, it really gave me an appreciation for the buying and selling process of aquariums. Uh, shopping aquariums. I'm shopping aquariums right now. I'm checking uh, Craigslist Nashville. I'm looking at the Craigslist uh, aquarium shops in the area, looking at what what they have to offer, what's for sale. And I just started thinking about uh, how to, uh, you know, if if someone asked me, what would I suggest because they wanted to buy an aquarium, whether it was a, a, a first time, a second time, a glass or an acrylic, what would be the tips? What, what kind of things would I talk with them about? And so I put together a video, uh, five aquarium buying t- uh, tips uh, before you buy, watch this. And it's just a lot of fun and uh, talks a lot about buying uh, buying aquariums. It could be October 31st. And um, of course, like I mentioned, the fish poison, October 28th, uh, they're gone, which is uh, just a, a video on diatomes. You know, one of the things I'm looking into, which I haven't had to think about for a very long time is, uh, is the idea of what happens when you first start a tank, right? You hear things like new, new tank syndrome, um, algae blooms, right? Bacterial blooms, cloudiness, uh, that cloud, cloudiness that won't go away. And of course, uh, diatomes or, or, or brown algae, and uh, which is a diatome. And so I'm, um, I put out a video on diatomes just based on some of the research I was doing. I thought it might help those of you who are having some trouble with tanks. I also uh, put together a video on what over the years was the most stable setup, why I th- I think that's the most stable setup. Uh, it weathered just about everything, uh, including disease that went through all my other tanks, and yet this one tank did not get the disease, and it maintained the most stable parameters of all my tanks. So I break it down, and I talk about my most stable a setup. What was the combination of filtration, media, uh, maintenance? Uh, you know what was your know, stock levels, right? All of those things discussed in uh, my best aquarium setup advice tips for a stable uh, African cichlid aquarium. And of course, that applies to any kind of aquarium. The things that are, that I cover in these videos doesn't matter if you have, you know, live bearers, a community tank, uh, really discus south american you know new world cichlids doesn't matter it, it's going to apply and then i've got a video on uh water uh just crystal clear water clarity t- kind of ties into the diatome uh the brown algae video coming up and it's just called this works and it's just the techniques that i have found that will give you that floating in air uh, pristine crystal clear water which everybody everybody likes and people would comment on my tanks how do you get that kind of clarity and uh, so you'll see that in my tanks usually unless I've just fed them or I've just done you know just did something to the substrate or moved some decor around or maybe there's some uh, micro bubbles from water movement because I do have a lot of water movement in my tanks 
And uh, apart from that, it's really just the fish floating around. And uh, it took a while to get there. I mean, it, it's, it's easier when you're, I think it's easier when you have a established, an established tank. So um, let's take a look at what's uh, going on here in the, uh, in the chat. I'm taking a look at the chat screen now, so I, I'm not I'm not intentionally ignoring you. I'm just looking at the chat. Hey, I want to welcome back Denny, uh, Denny, Dennis Rudell, one of our moderators who um, was working on Saturdays, and he's been able to come back today and join my other uh, awesome moderators, uh, Kevin Green and uh, and Gurvinder GP. And of course, the amazing candy. So we have uh, we have the full complement of moderators today. So uh, so behave. You better behave. <laughs> and uh, hello, Doug, and uh, Tom Adding from my favorite place in the world, Malibu, California. And to Tony Consiglieri. Hi to you too, Paul, Paul McCartney. Hello, my friend. And uh, let me scroll through this, Marty. Hey, Marty. How you doing, buddy? And James Green, good afternoon to you, James. Humble Rasta, love that name. Richard Prescott, and no, Richard, you got to get here pretty early. <laughs> we do have some early birds that arrive early. And uh, hello, Doug M. Richard Prescott says, first catching the live stream, kids are so wired. Why are the kids so wired, Richard? What's going on? Did you let them have a cup of coffee or some sugar? There's got to be a reason. <laughs> Kids are kids. They can be wired. And uh, I, I speak from experience. We, we raised four, four of them, and uh, two were kind of mellow, and, and two of them were um, just off the hook. Uh, <laughs> if they ever watch this, they'll know who they are. <laughs> hey, Cat Sailor, and hey, Terry. And uh, Terry's doing water changes. That's awesome. And has me in the background. I appreciate it. Thank you, Terry, for promoting the 30,000 subs. I appreciate that. And uh, let's see if there's anything else that jumps out at me. T-Bone. Hey, T-Bone. Hey, T-Bone. I hope your luck changes, my friend. It sounds like you're having quite an adventure. And uh, Sam Penny. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Sam helped with some of, the, um, some of the channel art that we use. And I thank you for that, Sam. There's a little by, uh, a little thank you at the bottom of every one of my uh, video notes. Hey, Paul. Paul Martin is here. Welcome to the uh, live stream, Paul Martin. Usually I see you over at Tank Talk. And uh, over at uh, the Lisa and John's uh, channel. All right. Terry Spelling, Ben is the reason that I switched to African cichlids, but I still have three of my South Americans that I left in there with them. A Jack Dempsey, an electric jack, a turquoise jewel. That could get interesting, Terry. Keep an eye on it. <laughs> As they get older, that could get very, very interesting. All right. Yeah, Candy, poor Ben Fishless. But, you know, I, I, I'm getting some comfort in my friend Gil. Uh, for those of you who tuned in late, this is Gil. And he is my, uh, you know, you know, they have those dogs that are like emotional dogs. This is my emotional fish. I'll take him with me. I'll take him. <laughs> I'll get him a little strap that says emotional support fish. <laughs> All right. Hey, Eddie Mendoza, Greg P. Hello, Ralph Ashdown. Thank you for uh, sitting in. Uh, Pentagram 666 more. Hello from Poland. Hello, Pentagram. And uh, Poland. Wow, that's awesome. All right, so let's get into the, let's get back into the subject here. It looks like we're over a hundred, so we've got some some folks that have arrived. I like it. So let's get into today's topic, and I tell you, it 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 feels it actually feels kind of strange, you know, like like you, you get into these routines, like I feed the dogs, I feed the fish, so I feed the dogs, and I come in, and I start to head to where the food is 
but I don't need to feed the fish. And uh, I turn a corner where there used to be a tank and I slow down a little bit and, and kind of angle out so that I don't startle the fish. And, but there's no tank. And, uh, you know, I, I, I turn the lights off in the bedroom and I have a certain routine I do so that the fish don't get startled. And I find myself still sort of in this operation mode, you know, operating this way and then realizing, what am I doing? There, there's, the tank is not there, you know? And uh, so it's a, very, it's, it, it's a bit awkward because you, after years and years of doing things a certain way, and then it's not like that anymore. It's it's like this, and it, it's just a kind of an empty sort of feeling. In the picture that you're seeing, that's Derek and his and his friend Nacho, Nacho. And uh, they came by and picked up the 100, and uh, they already have it set up. And he's just a great guy, uh, Derek Gann. He's a local fish keeper here in Southern Cal. And uh, they picked up that 100. And, you know, I, I sold the other tanks and each each time it was a little bit, it was like a, a, a little piece of me, right? But but there was, well, I still have those other three and then, well, I still have those other two and uh, I still have that one. And something about when that last tank, you know, when that last tank went, uh, just before that, a couple of days before that, Nolan from Nolan's Aquarium down in, in Santa Ana came and picked up all the remaining fish. I mean, there was some fish in there that maybe I could have sold some living stone eyes, some uh, Bucochromus nototanias, uh, some, um, there was some turquoise left. There was a big pleco. Uh, there was a Maduka uh, orange flame tail. There was a few good, good quality fish, a Borlei quad. And uh, I just said, go ahead, take them, give them a good home. And, uh, and because I've got to have the tank empty. I've got to have it ready for, for Derek to pick up. So I had the tank running empty for a few days, but it wasn't until the tank itself got loaded in the car that I really felt the, uh, the finality, the, the, uh, the end of it. And so it's a, it's a very unusual feeling to be tankless and fishless. Now, it looks like somebody, Remco. Hey, Remco, thank you, my friend, for that super chat. For those of you who are not aware of a uh, what a super chat is you do have an opportunity to toss a little dough at the channel at the bottom of the chat and uh, it's called a super chat and it's very appreciated thank you Remco and if you super chat and have a question I will try to answer the question but the truth is I usually try and answer most questions anyway if I don't get to your question don't be upset with me it just means that I didn't have a chance to get to it and uh I try and get to as many of them as I can. Have you actually had a period in your life where you were completely without, this is after you became a fish keeper. Have you had a period in your life where you were totally without fish and without tanks? And uh, why did that happen? And and how was it for you? Did, did you miss it? Did, was it like business as usual? Did you feel a little bit empty? Uh, did you hurry to get tanks again did it, or did it take a little while? I mean, I had a gap previously in my life where I had a job where I had to travel. And uh, and then when I was home, you know, I had, I had kids playing travel ball and we were just very, very busy with four kids. And I, and I, I had a period in my life where I didn't have tanks. And, uh, you know, at first you want it and then you kind of get acclimated to not. And then I uh, and then I bought one of my kids a tank and. I was off to the off to the races again. <laughs> so, <laughs> immediately, I got a bad case of multi tank syndrome. <laughs> so, um, if you've had that experience, share it. I'd like to hear what your experience has been having and going through periods of not having tanks. I'd be curious and uh, share it here because you know we all learn from each other on this channel. And the cichlid shack is telling Paul to watch his mouth. <laughs> hey, James, how about if I stop by and see you on my way to Tennessee? I'd like to stop by and see your shop. Maybe take a little footage, do a little walkthrough. Show the folks a little bit of the behind the scenes of the shack. 
and why would people go shack they don't go back so uh back to anywhere else so um, you and I will talk about that. I'm thinking about uh, stopping by possibly on the 1st. If you're going to be around, I'll give you a call. I'll, te I'll text you. Let's talk about it. So um, let's take a look at, um, at a survey that was conducted. And I did this. I did this survey on. Uh, there's a thing called the community page on uh, on YouTube, and I conducted a, a a survey. You can see it here, and the you can see the top the top uh, result there was water quality, both clarity and parameters. So I wanted to talk with you a little bit about that subject. Wherever you are, I hope you're drinking out of one of these. And uh, Candy can help hook you up with a cup. She'll direct you where you need to go to get one. <laughs> but water quality um, uh, with a close, uh, let me see, we had, and then controlling nitrates, something we hear a lot about, certainly in the heavily stocked African cichlid world, and uh, keeping my fish healthy, which, um, Boy, that's a big subject, keeping my fish healthy, and so many factors involved in it. Uh, but uh, let's talk a little bit about water clarity, and I, I, I want to, I want to just use this, uh, this sort of backdrop here. Let me pull it up here. Make one little adjustment, and hopefully you can uh, hear me okay. Okay, sound is good. And uh, I'd often get comments about water clarity, and and there's a lot more to it than just clarity. There's also, of course, water parameters, and and um, one of the things about looking at a tank is that very often, um, very often, it's what you're not seeing that's important. And um, when you look at a tank, when you look at the, the, the clarity of the water, and you know it, it, it can be impressive, but yet those fish can be floating around in poison and you don't, don't even know it. I mean, you, you could rattle off, anyone who's on this stream right now could rattle off all of the things that you don't see when you look at a tank and notice that the water clarity level is good, and I jotted just a few of them down, I mean, you can see ammonia and nitri nitrite levels, which are very, very stressful, if not deadly, on your fish. You can see the mineral content, which is vital for your fish. They take it in through their, through their scales. They take it in through their bodies, right? And the only minerals that are available to them are the minerals in the water. So if you're not uh, getting good mineral nutrition from the water you're adding or you're adding minerals, I would add the Seachem uh, Malawi Lake uh, uh, powder just for trace minerals. I have a lot of calcium, magnesium in Southern California water. I'm not sure how Nashville water is, but uh, you, you don't see the mineral content when you look at the water. You don't see the temperature. You don't see the pH. You don't see the oxygen level. These fish actually, um, I mean, they could be headed for oxygen uh, starvation here. I mean, it, there, there's a lot of things that you don't, that, you know, all, you, you, you just see the water clarity. That's all you see. And so there's so many other factors. It's a, uh, it's a fluid it's a fluid situation, uh, the, the comment that I stole from one of you. <laughs> it truly is a fluid situation. And this is where we get into test kits and uh, being able to test these kinds of things. And when I first uh, set up my tanks, probably for the first six months to almost a year, I'm testing on a pretty regular basis. I would say I go from weekly to every other week to then once a month. And by the end of, the, of a year, 
I'm probably, you know, every six weeks or so, maybe uh, every eight weeks, unless I notice something unusual. But in the beginning, there's a dialing in. There has to be a dialing in. What is your water hardness? Is it proper for the fish that you're keeping? Are you using test strips? Are you using liquid testing? What, where are your nitrates? Where are they hanging out? And again, that's a subject for a, another discussion. At what point do nitrates become dangerous? Some people will say 100 parts per million. Some people panic if they get over 10 parts per million. So, um, and again, something you can't tell by looking at the water. Another thing that you really can't tell also is level of nutrition. And that's going to be gotten into when we, when we uh, release the, the videos on the Piscine Energetics interviews. Uh, your fish may or may not actually be getting, um, be getting nutrition, even though it might look like they're getting nutrition. And one of the things that jumped out at me in the interviews with Piscine was that um, how much food is out there that is actually causing your fish to use energy to move empty, just empty product through their body. Now, for us cichlid keepers, what does that mean? Really, for any fish keeper, it means that, that, that this is energy uh, that could be used for... Uh, could be used for breeding. It could be used for fattening up, for strength, for a lot of other reasons. This energy is being used to push this stuff through. We also have the problem of bloat or a blocked intestinal tract. So if you're running ash, fillers, color, colors, artificial colors and junk like that through your fish that have no business in your fish, and those things are moving through the fish and the fish has to, has to dedicate energy to move it through, you're, you're actually creating a negative calorie situation and putting a fish at risk for, for a bloat by running more through that, that very long and narrow intestinal tract. You're also creating more waste in the water, which is, means that you have to mess with the tank more with water changes. Water changes are vital. At the same time, every time you mess with the, tr with the tank, you're stressing out your fish. So just keep that in mind. So that there's, you have these, again, it's a fluid situation. There's a balancing act going on here. So when we talk about water clarity, we also have to, in the same conversation, we have to also talk about what are we doing with pH? What are we doing with hardness? What are we doing with temperature? And what are we doing with uh, ammonia, nitrite, nitrates, right? What are we doing with these factors? The factors that you can't see when you look at a tank, these are invisible. The only way you can see them is to test. And so once my tanks became established and I became confident in my routine, that I had a routine that was working, that I had a very abundant and healthy beneficial bacteria colony going on that was doing its job, then I started to ease back on my testing and uh, I became more confident. But even that, uh, after about a year and a half, I did a random test and noticed that my nitrates had started to, to creep or creeping up. And what had happened was that my water supply, when I had first moved here, had zero nitrates. And now it was between, you know, like around 10 to 20 parts per million coming out of my faucet. Now, what that means, I'm sorry, I'm addicted. What that means is that unless you do greater than a 50% water change, and I actually released a video on it where I talked about uh, this sort of, this concept of, of nitrate, nitrate creeping. You know, you, you're doing 20%, even 40% water changes every week and your nitrates keep going up. And you're like, what's going on? Well, if, if, you're adding, if you're adding nitrates with each water change, it becomes almost impossible to get ahead unless you're doing a pretty significant um, water change. And I'm talking like 80%, 90%. And I got to the point where 
I think the formula I came up with in that video, and and um, and again, this is this is my you know one fish keeper's opinion, but the formula I came up with was uh, for every ten parts per million, go ten percent over fifty percent. So I had twenty parts per million out of the tap, so I was doing a minimum of a seventy percent water change. And so, um, and maybe just as a little buffer, as much as 80 to 85%. And then I noticed my nitrates started to go down. They started to go down because I started to actually make, you know, actually put a dent into the total number of nitrates. Instead of just doing a small percentage and, and adding nitrates and then ending up sort of with actually a little bit more or about at the same, at the same place. So anyway, in the video that I released on the subject, which the, the title of it escapes me. I actually go over the math, uh, the math of it and how it made sense to me. And, and one of you shared this idea of nitrate creep. They called it nitrate creep, where over time nitrates can creep up a little bit if you're adding water that has nitrates in it and you're doing water changes that are under 50%. So just something to be aware of. And if you're very frustrated because you're doing your regular water changes, and your nitrates don't go down, test your tap. Test your tap. Check what's happening there because you may have a situation there. So um, when, I get to, uh, when I get to Nashville, one of the first things I have to do is I have to check the tap water and I have to check the local, like the mineral content of the local water. And I'm going to look at the reports from the local water treatment area. But I tell you, those can sometimes be very off because from the water treatment, what it travels through to get to your home. So the, the, best, the best thing is to test it right from the tap. And so I'm going to be doing, um, I'll, I'll check what, the, what, what Nashville is doing, what my water district is doing with the water, what their reports are saying, because that's all available online. But I'm also going to be uh, testing the tap to see what I have available. I might have softer water. I may have water that, that I'm going to have to uh, bring up the pH in order to keep cichlids. I've already ordered uh, 120 pounds of white and black aragonite, which is gonna help some Caribbean Sea. Somebody in Nashville posted on a Craigslist that they were going to do a cichlid tank and decided instead to do discus, so they don't need the aragonite. And, and they had 120 pounds unopened of Caribbean Sea aragonite. So I contacted him, said, look, I'm arriving the first week of November. I, I want your substrate. I offered him uh, you know, a PayPal deposit. And he said, hey, I'm old school. Uh, if you tell me you're going to do it, I'll take your word for it. I'll see you in November. That was pretty impressive, I thought. So I said, well, maybe this is, maybe the, <laughs> I'm not in Los Angeles anymore. <laughs> Some of you have noticed I'm wearing an Aquarium Co-op t-shirt today. This is Murph. Murph, the, uh, the puffer. I think he's the, uh, the mascot for Corey over at Aquarium Co-op. I'm sure you're familiar with Aquarium Co-op. If you're not, definitely go check them out. They are, uh, uh, Corey is one of the folks I consider the real deal on YouTube. He's done a lot of education and a lot of study and uh, research both in the products he offers and also in the advice that he gives. So let's take a look here at what some of you are uh, talking about. And uh, I'm going to scroll through the chat. And uh, while the chat is on the screen there, you'll only see the current chat. That's all you see. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll backwards into it on my screen and... Uh, and just see what you're talking about. If I missed a super chat while I was talking, I'm sorry. Sometimes I get going and I don't look at the screen and I do that on purpose because I can get really uh, sidetracked. Terry's working on her six water changes. You're my hero, Terry. <laughs> that would have been my normal weekend, but uh, not not this weekend. It's just it's just Gil and me. <laughs> his water his water parameters are perfect right now. So um, Normandy, France. Hey Ralph, 
Ralph Ashdown from Normandy, France. Wow, love it. Jerry Cook, I'm moving across the country as well on the 30th. MN, is that, is that uh, MN? Is that Minnesota? Uh, to Arizona, I'm actually taking all my tanks and most of my fish. Wow, that's great. Good for you, Jerry. Let me know. Let me know how that went for you. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I was really on the fence about doing that. Um, it's almost 2,000 miles that I'll be traveling uh, with several layovers. And um, I wanted to stop at a few fish stops like the Cichlid Shack. And so I don't know. And I've got two dogs with me and my youngest daughter. So anyway, it just didn't seem practical for me as much as I would have loved to have kept some of those fish. Let's see here. William Craig, American fast food is um, a disaster. That's what I think about it. It's a complete disaster. Um, when I take when I take my dogs off of off of food, off of dog food, my wife for like for six dollars roughly will make a huge casserole of, of chicken legs that you can pick up for nothing, right? A packet of chicken legs. She'll put carrots and sweet potatoes and peas and spinach and turmeric, a little teeny bit of garlic, and she'll make this big casserole. And it comes out to just a few dollars. And I, we feed them for a week out of this thing. The dogs immediately, immediately act differently. They're more active. They're more playful. Their coats are better. They're, um, my, old, um, my old beagle, the one that's probably pushing 12, which is very old for a beagle, she's standing up on her hind legs and jumping up. She wasn't doing that for a while. So uh, if, if that can happen with a dog, what if you started putting pure nutrition into a person? Cut out all the fillers, all the all the dyes, all, all the preservatives, all the junk, the stuff that has no no place really. Your body doesn't even know what to do with it. You know, it just pushes it into the fat or it gets hung up in your liver. And anyway, don't get me started. <laughs> Too late, you got me started. <laughs> all right. Whoa. 2499. Somebody uh, came in with a big super chat. Let's take a look at who that was. I gotta gotta give that one a shout out. I already got Remco. Remco, thank you for that, my friend. And uh, let me move up here and see what uh, who came in who came in big here. For some reason, my super chat is uh, up. Cat Sailor, buddy, thank you, Cat Sailor. That's very appreciated of you. You are a true friend of the channel. That is for sure, and uh, I really appreciate that. So let's see what else you folks are talking about here. Uh, biggest question, which fish will you keep? Do you want to switch bio? Uh, Pentagram 666 more. I, I am uh, starting entirely from scratch. And right now, the short list, I'm thinking about a water box aquarium inside the house with discus, with white sand, a nice piece of driftwood with Anubias glued all over it. And with an, creating an archway for the discus to swim through, and then pick up some of those German Denker uh, discus, put about half a dozen of them in there, maybe some cardinal tetras, maybe put the cardinal tetras in there first, let let the tank kind of mature a little bit, and then put the discus in. And uh, so discus, uh, you know, I'm in love with uh, geophagus. I just love those fish. I love their look. I love the the sort of luminescence of their color, the long the long trailing fins, uh, geophagus. Of course, African cichlids. I'm thinking about having three, um, uh, initially three 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 tanks that are dedicated to African cichlids um, with that substrate that I'm purchasing, and uh, and grow out some some of them like buy a batch. Buy a batch of Autopharynx tetrastigma, a batch of uh, maybe a batch of peacocks, uh, some ruby reds, some uh, Benga sunshines, maybe uh, maybe some blue neons, 
uh, just buy a, some batches and just let them put on some size. After they've put on some size, then add a second wave that includes maybe a Venusus uh, fish that will that will grow and overtake those fish eventually, but put them in when they're smaller and uh, maybe pick up uh, some sulfur heads, things like this, you know, fish that over the years uh, I thought were just sort of spectacular. And then from those batches that are growing, pick the pick of the litter and then move those to what I would call a show tank. And that will probably end up being a, a 125, you know, something that's six feet across and uh, to give them a lot of swim room. And uh, so that's that, that that's sort of where I'm at. I, the geophagus, discus, um, you know, I, I wanted planted, but I'm thinking I can have best of both worlds with the discus. I can have planted and have my discus. So I'll use that as my planted tank. And uh, so we'll go from from there with that. And uh, so I hope that addresses your question. And you know what else? I mean, you know, I might I might walk into uh, a pet shop at you know in Tennessee, or maybe see something at the uh, Cichlid Shack that I fall absolutely in love with that I absolutely have to have. Oh, and South Americans, I want to have a um, I, I, I want to have a green terror with that gold edge on the on the tail. Uh, somebody, I think somebody in Nashville already contacted me and said that they have one and I asked them to send me some pictures. So um, anyway, I definitely want a green tear. I just fell in love with those when I went to that pet, pet shop in Hollywood and uh, they had one and I was just, it just blew, I just was blown away how beautiful that fish was and with that little orange yellow edge on the tail it, it i don't know some sometimes you see a fish and it's like love at first sight right and uh, that's what happened with me and so i've got to have one so i don't know if i'll have that one with other fish some people have told me that they have a green tears with jack dempsey's and other cichlids i mean we'll see you know i've also heard stories of the fish killing each other and and uh, once they get older once they get up into like breeding uh, size, they start to become very, very aggressive. So we'll see. I'm going to do some research, but I definitely want a green tear. Aaron Brooks. Hey, Ben, are you going to be stopping at the Cichlid Shack? One of my favorite places. Would love to meet you. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I plan on it. I, it depends on how the dogs and my daughter are doing. And uh, I'm not saying that in the order of preference. <laughs> but it depends how they're doing. Um, but, uh, James, if you're still on, do you want to make an event out of it? Do you want to, uh, announce something and, and maybe have some people come on? We'll do a little, uh, greet and meet and talk to some folks and make a little video while I'm there and, and really just distract and waste a lot of your time when you should be selling fish and maintaining your aquariums. <laughs> Aaron, I'd love to do that. Actually, I did it once at, at, at uh, Nolan's over in, uh, down in Santa Ana, California, and I just I just had a great time. I tell you, the fish keeping community, uh, and this was reinforced recently when I sold these tanks and fish. We have a wonderful community, friendly people. I mean, um, I mean, think about it. Someone who's out there and wants to kill somebody or uh, wants to sell drugs or gangbang is probably not spending a lot of time. Uh, taking care of an aquarium. I mean, probably not. So, hey, Josh, Josh Cunningham from Cunningham Cichlids. We have some very legit fish vendors on the uh, stream today. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Uh, Chevy Fish, hello, Chevy Fish. Isaac Wayman, my FX5 is pushing micro bubbles, all fittings under the waterline. Tight lid isn't warped. Wow, I don't know. I don't know. You've got something. Something's coming in. Something's letting air in. You might have um, checked that purge valve. Make sure that purge valve is on secure and really shut and put the little plastic cover on it. And then batten that that thing down, screw it down. I mean, you maybe maybe something's. I would imagine if there was a, any kind of a of a leak there that you would have a drip coming from it. Um, 
you know, go all the way around. Maybe you've done this already. Go all the way around with the fasteners and just give them each a little, a little tweak. And if you still have an issue, it might be time for you to get all your O-rings swapped out. I don't know how, how old is the unit. Do you say it? But um, not a bad idea after a few years just to go and order up all of the O-rings for the input-output and the O-rings for the top lid. Just go ahead and swap all those out. Uh, get some um, food-grade silicone. Um, I, some people use Vaseline. I've heard some bad things about Vaseline. Uh, use food-grade silicone and lubricate the O-rings and put them on. And, um, you know, you might have an O-ring with a, with, a, with a flat area that is somehow allowing a very, very small amount of, of air. I mean... But again, I mean, you'd think there, you would think there, there would be a little bit of, uh, of water showing up there. So do a good inspection, you know, with a flashlight. See if you see any buildup of minerals or water anywhere around it. That might give you a clue. But I'd use a very powerful flashlight and inspect the heck out of it. Let's see here. Blimpus wants updates on Gill from the... <laughs> For those of you tuned in late, this is Gil, and he is my, uh, <laughs> he is my emotional support fish until I get tanks and aquariums, you know, and fish going again. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So yes, Chevy fish, my aquarium spaces are naked and, uh, that's one way to look at it. Uh, okay. It is, TJ. TJ, it is weird. It feels weird. I still walk around quietly in the areas where the tanks used to be. It's like I had this automatic, don't startle the fish, uh, sort of, uh, you know, anyway. Before bed, you know, before bed, feed the fish. Okay, let me see, my evening routine. Oh, there's no fish, no, no fish to feed. So it's a, you know, you're, you're sort of getting rewired, right? And uh, Corey, did I see Corey Hecker in here somewhere? There he is. Hey, Corey, how you doing, buddy? Corey has some monster fish. Uh, check out his, uh, check out Corey Hecker on YouTube. Roderick De La Cruz, if you feel like doing water changes, you're... <laughs> I don't miss him that much, my friend. <laughs> He's offered to let me come to his home and do water changes. That's just to help me out emotionally during this period. I appreciate that, Roderick. <laughs> Very kind of you. Paul, Inventory King. Check out Inventory King on YouTube. The man has gone totally salty, and uh, but but he's doing a great job, and I love what I'm seeing. He even has me thinking about a reef tank. So, uh, all right. Cichlid Shack would absolutely love that, sir. Okay, let's set a date and uh, we'll make some announcements and uh, I'll be there. I'll be there. And uh, We'll meet some of the uh, fish keepers in the Arizona, in the Phoenix area, and that'll be a lot of a lot of fun. And uh, maybe you can run a few specials that coincide with it, so our fish friends can get a little break. And uh, anyway, for those of you that remember that giant eye biter, that uh, and my beautiful uh, bicolor 500, those were from uh, James over at the Cichlid Shack. Solar King Ronnie uh, talking to Chevy. Was it? How do you feel about using Kemi Pier? I'm leaving for two weeks. No one to add or change my water. She can only feed them, and usually too much. Solar King, um, I would recommend that you leave measured amounts with dates and times written, like little baggies. You can buy these little vitamin baggies, and leave those and have them marked 
with the day of the week, the date, and the time. I mean, do it like you're doing it for a two-year-old and uh, have them drop that much in. Otherwise, overfeeding will pollute your tanks while you're gone and you'll have a very bad situation to come home to. Uh, so leave measured amounts. That is my recommendation. Whether you add Chemipure or not, if you have an established tank, that really shouldn't be necessary. I mean, I don't think, uh, but it wouldn't hurt. I don't think it would hurt. If you have plants, be sure you use Chemipure Green. If you don't have plants, Chemipure Blue works great. And of course, I used Purigen. Purigen was what I was using for years. But once the tanks became established and mature, I stopped using chemical filtration. Terry Spelling, I definitely have multi-tank syndrome, MTS we call it. <laughs> Six tanks, we'll add more. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to get on that highway again. Just bought a ruby red coffee. Oh, good. Hey, Seth, thank you. Thank you for buying that ruby red. That ruby red was one of my favorite, favorite all-time fish. Um, some of you out there uh, prefer perhaps the German red. Uh, for me, that ruby red, because of the ruby, that purple-blue color they get uh, around the gills and under the throat, it's just a beautiful fish, and it's on one of my coffee mugs. I'm probably going to be adding um, the Tetrastigma, Autopharynx Tetrastigma, which was one of my favorite all-time fish. I'll probably add the old man, the, o, the OB, uh, probably add him to a coffee mug. You know, I'm starting to think uh, what fish. Maybe I'll add the Vinny the Venusis if I haven't already. Uh, maybe a close-up of his face. So I'll be creating more coffee mugs over time. And uh, collect the whole collection. <laughs> Let's see here, extreme flakes and pellets. Someone's talking about extreme. I I used extreme um, and I have extreme. I was using extreme in the last four or five months of my tanks. Extreme is a very good food. I like it a lot. And um, I, I saw a video about the person who invented extreme and a, a visit it to that person's fish farm and the colors on the fish, especially, I remember a, a buca chrome with Notatania you had that looked like it was salt water. It looked like salt water colors. And uh, so that made me very interested in what was going on with extreme fish food. I know that there are several sources of it. And uh, I think uh, I think it's uh, the sickle check carries it. I think uh, maybe super cichlids is carrying it. I'm not sure. Possibly. I think Corey might be carrying extreme. I don't know. Candy, does Corey offer extreme over at the co-op? So you can get it from lots of places. Remco, I started doing two water changes a week, 50 and 30%. Highly recommend it. If you have the time for it, you can refresh the water a lot without doing huge ones. And, you know, for a long time, Remco, and, and what led up to that nitrate creep I was talking about earlier was I started to do 20% water changes, 20 to 30% to reduce the, uh, the uh, pH or any kind of shock that might be occurring to reduce the stress that was occurring during water changes. And I think um, for the stock levels and the type of fish I was keeping, cichlids are just pigs. They release a tremendous amount of ammonia. Um, you know, they're, they're just pigs. And so I, uh, I had to go, I had to go back into, especially when I discovered nitrates coming out of the tap, I had to go to much larger, um, water changes. So let's see. Cat Sailor, this is a down payment on a future Ruby Red in your new fish tank. I can't do African cichlids yet myself, so I'll, I'll live vicariously through your tank. Hope you're doing an Africans. Yes, Cat Sailor, for sure. And yeah, as a matter of fact, I will get a ruby red and I will name it Cat Sailor. <laughs> 
we'll have uh, maybe we'll start a little contest uh, for twenty four ninety five. You can you can have a fish named after you. <laughs> My wheels are turning now. <laughs> All right. If you have any other and uh, distortion Bristol. Ben, love your videos watching from the UK. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. I love the uh, the international reach of YouTube and how it allows us to uh, get information. I'm, I'm watching some uh, German some German videos. I don't even understand what they're saying, but I'm watching the uh, some discus videos from Germany and uh, you know watching some uh, fish market videos from uh, you know from the Orient, you know from Asia, and amazing amazing the stuff that we can be exposed to with youtube and i thank you for uh for joining the live stream so um any other questions if you have any other questions please go ahead and ask them now any comments anything you would like to say uh before i i do the wrap up i certainly uh read read what you have to say and i take it to heart i try and read as much as i can I, I don't often get to every comment. It just becomes impossible. I think there's 200,000 views a month. I think, I have to check the analytics, 200,000 views a month. And very often those result in comments and I can't quite catch up with all of them. <clears throat> and um, if you have any, any comments, any questions, go ahead and ask them now. And I think we're getting on to the hour. And I know that you folks are very busy, have a busy weekend. I'm going to be doing one last live stream uh, next weekend. And uh, that Sunday is a big yard sale where we're going to go ahead and offload everything we can before we leave. So that will be the last live stream uh, probably for three or four weeks until I get set up in, in Nashville. I'll be putting in videos into that Saturday slot, uh, probably some of the Piscine um, uh, food poison videos. <laughs> uh, so such, a, such a clickbait thumbnail, right? Food poison. <laughs> anyway, uh, the the those those will be going into the uh, into that Saturday slot. So we'll still have that Saturday 10 a.m. slot that you can come by and view some content. I'll try and get out as much content as I can. And I know that a lot of you responded positively to the vlog, to the idea of vlogging the adventure across country. So my daughter and I are going to be doing some vlogs, uh, just doing some uh, uh, clips, some short video clips of driving from the Los Angeles area to Nashville and uh, with a few stops along the way. And I, I, you folks seem to like the idea of a vlog. Let's go ahead and do it and uh, see what kind of response we get. It should be kind of fun. So um, thank you to my wonderful moderators. The amazing Candy, GP, Kevin, Denny. You're the best on YouTube, my friends. Thank you to all of you who show up at these live streams. Uh, to those of you who super chat and those of you who couldn't super chat but are here, your support is very, very appreciated as well. And um, don't forget to um
So I was told that we had no sound for this segment. Lost audio. Okay, I'm back just to make sure that you do have some audio for this segment. Be, uh, be sure to hit the bell and the sub button. And uh, it looks like we lost audio on that last little piece. We were almost flawless up to that point. And visit on, on, uh, on Facebook at Ben, o, uh, at ben o apostrophe Cichlid. Please be sure to answer all of the questions or else the moderators, the admin will not let you in. And visit on Instagram for some behind the scenes for some behind the scenes uh, looks, especially with the traveling across the country. I'll probably be putting up a lot of short videos there. All right. Thank you for letting me know about the audio. I'm glad I could come back and fix that. So with that being said, thank you to my wonderful moderators, uh, Candy, GP, Kevin, and Denny. Thank you to all of you who super chatted and thank you to all of you who show up and watch these videos. You are the best. I mean it. You rock. And, uh, that's it for me, my friends. I hope to see you next week for the final live stream uh, before we take a short break for, uh, for some Nash Nashville setup. All right. So again, let's go ahead and end off. Thank you for letting me know about the audio. Thank you.